All right, just sit down in a brand new 1-3 game. Very first hand dealt. I'm in the hijack with pocket sevens. Person under the gun opens for a small race to nine and get a couple callers. So I decided to call and set mine. And we go to a flop of nine, seven, deuce with two diamonds. So yeah, baby, here we go again, running hot. Everybody checks over to me, so I put out a bet of $20. Looking to get some action from a nine. Maybe someone will take one off with a straight draw. Who knows, maybe the initial raiser will be calling with some overcards. We end up getting two callers to a turn card of a king of diamonds. Not my favorite card. It does put out the possible flush. The first player checks and now the under the gun player decides to bet out for $35. You know, I was debating whether this should be a raise in this spot to protect against a diamond draw or just let him continue if he had a king. It is possible he has a flush, but I think it was probably unlikely. River card comes as a clean four of clubs. I think the person and the big blind miss and now the under the gun leads again for 65. I decided to flat and I'm glad I did because he turns over five, six of diamonds. Did not see this one coming. So after that rough start, we've been uh, basically card dead for a long time. Finally looked down at a pair of eights in the low jack and uh, decided to raise it up and I ended up getting tons of action. There's plenty of action to be had at this table. Uh, so we go four ways to a flop and it comes 10, seven, six and it gets checked over to me. And here I decided to take a, a big stab. Uh, I want to try to make it look like I had possibly an overpair to this board and maybe weed out some of the possible draws. Looking back on this, I think it's just better just to check this one back and take a free card and see if I can spike a nine. But uh, I let at it. Uh, player I was worried about folds and then the player in the big blind um, thinks for a little bit before raise into $200 and I go wow I really stepped into this one um, I don't have the eight of clubs in my hand I don't have any kind of you know he's obviously doing this with a hand much stronger than mine so I Hollywood for a bit trying to make it look like I had some sort of tough decision but basically this is a fold and a fold all day long um, really wishing I would have checked this one back I you know I might have been able to catch a nine, but I didn't. So day is not going the way I have planned, and uh, being card dead is no fun. I was thinking maybe this pair of pocket eights will be better than the last. So I'm on the button. It's there's a straddle of six, and everybody folds to me, and I make a big open to 25, just hoping to take something down because I haven't won a pot yet today, and it's been about an hour and a half. And instead of taking it down, I end up getting three callers. So there's a hundred dollars in the pot and we're headed to a flop. And as I said, I haven't drug a chip yet and it doesn't look like I'm going to because the flop comes 10, nine deuce with uh, two spades. And the person in the big blind who's been super active and has started to sip on a couple beers decides just to lead out for $55. Um, it ends up getting folded back around to me. And of course, I don't really have too much to do here besides let it go. Uh, a guy who's been drinking a lot leading into you. And when, when the board comes 10-9, you got to figure your beat. So I throw it away. He ends up flashing a 10 of diamonds. So this is about an hour and a half later. I haven't played a hand yet. And uh, the same person from the previous hand who's been drinking has been drinking even more and has been playing extremely erratically and been bluffing his pants off. So I'm in the big blind. He opens for 45 uh, and he's been doing this quite a bit. He's been opening, betting, showing down all his bluffs, which were basically almost every hand. I've seen him raise uh, pre-flop to $50 with four deuce suited and then uh, bet it all the way. And when this person finally folds, he would you know, show him the bluff. So my idea on this hand was just to be a bluff catcher. I'm sure I'm way ahead of his range and I'm just going to let him bluff it off. Flop is really good, 5-5-4. Five, five, so uh, I check it over to him expecting him to bluff 100% of the time and he bets out $100. Uh, sticking with the plan, I put in the call. 
hoping for a clean run out and the turn is an eight of diamonds which puts up you know straight draws to seven six but let's face it he can have any two here he leaves again for another hundred dollars i'm just going to be bluff catching all the way river's another bad card it's a nine of hearts and i checked to him and he checked it back so i go wow that's unusual and he ends up turning over jack eight suited and he took it down so after playing for nearly four hours, I decided just to hang it up for the day. I'm down like uh, $630 and have not drug a single chip all day long. The action was great. I'm sure the, the person who's drinking in seat four is going to give it all back, but um, I, I'm just not, not feeling it. So I hung it up, went over to the restaurant, uh, decided to get some, uh, get some food had my uh, my favorite Mongolian beef and uh, I go I'll give it another shot the next day I just want you guys to know that your feedback matters and matters a lot uh, during the meetup game I was doing a lot of communications with the management over at Capital Casino and had a chance to sit down with the owner Clark and talk about a few things and one of the things he asked about was how my audience felt about Capital Casino. And I mentioned that one of the things that they did not like was that rule where when someone acts out of turn that their action wasn't binding. Uh, this is a perfect example. I was uh, playing in this 1-3 uh, game and a player acted out of turn and he was able not only to retrieve his all-in bet but I mean, he could have folded instead of uh, going all in. He could have done just about anything. There was no penalty for him acting out of turn. Anyway, that rule has changed because of your feedback. And uh, I think that uh, it's a good change. I think this is a rule that needed to be put in. There's also another situation where I bet $50 into a pot and now a player puts in a stack and it was it's supposed to be a raise it looks like a raise the person behind him folds but when the dealer counted out it was only 95 and the rule before was that it has to be a full bet to be uh, a raise well that has also changed thanks to you i really do appreciate your feedback and uh clark the owner of capital casino uh is trying to make the place as poker friendly to uh, visitors from out of town and for the local players around here so it's a new day, let's hope for better things. We're down a little bit uh, before this hand takes place. I end up having two aces on the button. It's things that dreams are made of, and it's a straddled pot. There were a few callers. I decided to raise, and I get called by the straddler. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop with $94 in the pot. Flop is beautiful. Ace high, two clubs. What more can you ask for? First player checks it over. I bet out 25 and he puts in the quick call. Turn card comes as a seven of clubs. Definitely not my favorite. Puts the, you know, the flush draw there. And now my opponent leads out for $40. He has about $150 behind. And with that size stack, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just jam. I don't want him to take one off and get in there with a, you know, a cheap draw with a, a lone club. So if he wants to draw, he's going to have to put his stack in. He ends up folding, and then we take down this first hand. Next hand we play is against the same opponent. We're in the small blind with two tens. One player limps. He raises to 12. I call from the small blind for 12. Big blind folds out, and the limper puts in the call. So we're going three ways to a flop with 39 in. I think three betting out of the uh, small blind is probably the better play, but as played, I called. Flop comes 853 with two clubs. Pretty good flop for my hand. I decided to check it over to the initial raiser and he puts in a bet for $20. He could be doing this with a very wide range. I decided to isolate him. As I said, he just lost a big pot, so he might be a little bit steamed. So I make it 60. He thinks for only a second before jamming. Now here I'm trying to determine what kind of hands he would do this with. Obviously, I think the most likely hand will be like two clubs that are over cards. Ace-King, Ace-Queen of Clubs, maybe King-Queen of Clubs. 
You know the type of hands I'm talking about. Also, he could be doing this with an over pair, similar to mine. I think if he had like aces or kings, he might just flat and see if a club peels off before putting a stack in. But he's, he's not very deep, so I'm thinking that, okay, if I take all his pairs and all his flush draws into account, I'm basically flipping with this and there's already some dead money in the pot. So yeah, my chips are going in. I don't have a club blocker, so that unblocks a little more flush draws. I think I'm in good shape. As we're waiting for a run out, he actually picked up his cards and was showing his neighbor and I got a little glimpse of a nine of clubs. So my feeling is he probably either has pocket nines or a flush draw with a nine of clubs. Turn card comes as a red four and we get a red five on the end. He ends up showing queen nine of clubs. So he was on the flush draw and we win this pot. There's one limp and it comes to the button who puts in a raise to 18. We look down in the big blind at two black aces, a beautiful sight to see. We re-raise to 48. So it's only 30 more on top. I probably could go a little bit bigger here. Uh, it gets folded back to the player on the button who decides on a call. So with $100 in the pot and uh, we got two aces, I mean, life is good. Flop comes 865 with two spades. So a rather coordinated flop. I'm really happy that I got those other players to fold. I should really have most of his calling range crushed at, at this point, unless he has specifically pocket eights, pocket sixes, or pocket fives. So I leave for 40, hoping to get some action. But this type of flop really misses his range, his calling range a lot. So I expect to get a fold out of him, and uh, that's exactly what happens. He looks at his cards and studies them for a little bit, and he decides on a fold. He is a vlog watcher and vlog supporter, so I'm happy uh, to let him know that I got him on this one with some good cards. No bluff here. Now, this hand happened a little bit later against the same opponent. There is a $6 straddle, there is one limper, and he raises to 30 from the hijack. I look down at ace queen in the small blind and I decide to put in the three bet and I make it 105. He gets folded back around to him and he looks uh, like he's a little bit nervous about putting in his chips, but he looks like he feels like he has to. Uh, so he ends up just making the call and by the way he does it, it makes me feel like he has a very strong no pair hand like ace king or ace queen like I have. So my hope is that the flop will come ragged and small and I can just jam and we get a nine high flop. I jam since he was uncomfortable pre-flop with ace king ace queen type of hands. I'm hoping that he's uncomfortable with them now and that he would fold it. He does end up putting in the fold and later told me that he had ace king and was really close to jamming pre-flop and I told him that I had ace queen and he would have had me. Now that you're done playing poker, can you come home and help me catch this squirrel? He's really, really fast. Thanks for watching guys, really appreciate your support. These are the totals for this week. Definitely not what we were hoping for, but uh, good news, no squirrels were actually harmed in the making of this vlog. And uh, wish you guys luck and we'll see you next week. I will be on the road for part of next week, heading to Southern California for some uh, personal matters. And I might be stopping by and playing a little poker if I have an opportunity. Follow me on Instagram for any updates on where and when I will be playing. Till next time, good luck at the tables.